Welcome! It's time to start a new project. This will be a three episode series building the Das Werk or TACOM Panda A in this early appearance with a winter whitewash on it. The footage you see is work in process. I'm closely to finish the weathering. The mud is still missing, but I'm confident I bring this project to a good end and can start talk about it. This episode we end about here with the field camouflage applied, talking about the application of Simmerit, that's a tech Simmerit of course, made up from resin, as well as the build process in general. And I will have some useful tips of course, not only about the tracks that are very specific for TACOM, but we will also compare acrylic and lacquer paint for the field applied camouflage. I'm Tank Brusher. Thanks for subscribing. Please enjoy the video. So that's the Panzerkampfwagen 5 Panda Ausführung A, the early version without interior by Das Werk. Das Werk is a company or a brand owned by Modellbau König, MBK. That's a German or the largest German online shop store, maybe even the largest in Europe, or one of them of course, and they team up with some well-known brands, Tacom in this example, bringing us model kits for a very affordable price and with a configuration that is more suited for models like me, giving zero Fs about interiors and being interested in finishing the model kit in a reasonable time. Tacom came out with the mold in 2018. One year later we see Das Werk reboxing this thing in a without interior configuration and teaming up with Attack as well, bringing us the fitting Simmerit for it. That's really interesting. An early Panther A needs Simmerit unless you go for the early September 1933 configuration and this is the Simmerit pattern of Daimler-Benz. Daimler-Benz is one of three companies assembling the Panther tank. The other two players were the Maschinenfabrik Augsburg-Nürnberg MAN and the Maschinenfabrik Niedersachsen-Hannover MNH. All three have different Simmerit patterns and we can yeah, figure out which tank was assembled where by looking at it. Of course, Attack is well known for its good quality Simmerit. This is no difference. We get resin casted mantlets. We get this typical sheet of the Simmerit on the hull. Sorry for not having a tight shot here. We have to look at the primed one. I like the result. It looks really fantastic, I think, and it's totally worth the 20 euros. Paying about 50 euros for a tank with usable tracks, a Simmerit coating on it, and yeah, in this detailed manner, that's uh, just a well rounded kit. For applying the Simmerit, I'm down to supermarket grade CA glue and a fresh blade for the hobby knife. I know Simmerit should be sanded out of its carrier skin, but the only method of creating resin dust. I would accept in my room is wet sanding it under water and I'm not set up for this. But if you want to cut it out, it's possible. We need a sharp blade and if we get the angle right, the Simmerit is really riding on the blade and there's almost no clean up to do. And I filmed really the most complicated part here and you can see how well it lifts out of its carrier film. It's only the second project I use Attack Simmerit on, but I think it's totally worth the extra cost and I've already stashed up a few more kits included the Simmerit add-on. A little bit sanding is needed of course, um, we have to die one death in this case and I apply it by first dry fitting the parts, applying some super glue for the lack of a better solution so far, but the super glue leaves just enough time to set it up right and during the whole process of applying Simmerit all around the vehicle I had 
no issues whatsoever. After the clue has settled, I really only try to adjust the part, of course, as long as the clue hasn't settled. And after it has settled, I use the sanding sponge and get it into a good fit. The gaps are closed with my trusty Vallejo acrylic putty. And so we get a good overall appearance of the Simmerit coating, I think. The only issue I found with the Simmerit is the rear hatch down there. These two open parts should be covered with Simmerit and not be present on the early version. There was a towing attachment point in the later version of the Ausführung A, not in this one. The only other issue I found with the kit was this top cover for the gun assembly. That's a leftover from the interior and to no greater relevance here, but this does not fit into its position that way. It has to be installed from the inside, even if you follow the instruction step by step and not mount it while it's glued on to the turret. The rest of the assembly was pretty much straightforward. The fit of the resin replacement parts is perfect. There's nothing to complain about. And I will go into the details of a Ausführung A early version of the Panther in the next episodes. It's just too much. I would have to stretch the video too long. The running gear was assembled the same way as I showed on my VK3001 using some green stuff sculpting putty to create a solid module out of it. The distance between the interleaving road wheels is way too short to have a significant impact of the final appearance of the model, but it saves us so much time and hassle to yeah, just create the module and call it here. Now let's have a look in the tracks. Tacom is presenting us with a very interesting version of link and length tracks. We have to glue the guide horns onto the track links separately. Uh, we can appreciate it when we look at how complicated the geometry of a Panther track is and what the cost of creating a slide mold would be. The guide horns come spaced perfectly for the correspondent track links. We have to glue them on in a particular angle and cut them out. I lost a few of the guide horns during the process. That was because I used a Tamiya Extra Thin to glue them on. I would recommend a somewhat thicker glue with a little bit more punch in the drying time. And I adjusted this by using the an almost empty bottle of extra thin together with the Revel Contacta Professional solving two issues giving me a thicker clue and the Revel clue a better applicator. This needle applicator is not very suited for detail work. I don't like it but together with a brush it's quite doing fine. The link and length tracks are assembled in a jig I don't know what I should say about it. I was able to deal with it, but it's not a God-given solution for a really good looking track. We have to spare out the underside, mounting it when the road wheels are on. And it worked somehow, but yeah, not completely to my full satisfaction. But I changed something. I got my surface plate out and really paid attention of getting square sitting tracks this time. Some of my vehicles had crooked tracks in the past. And this time I went a little bit overboard, making sure they sit in the right place and at the right angle. To wrap up the after action <laughs> report or the build process, of course, photo edge parts are included. The grills look beautiful. They are really fine. They have the right type of geometry, the right pattern. We can see from the reference material together with the copper wire for the tow cable and the uh, track mounting cable. It's a perfect, well-rounded kit. 
only things to complain on a high level would be the side skirts being a one piece and not separate pieces. We can't cut them off because they would be interleaving. But now let's go into the painting process. After priming the model with Mr. Surfacer 1200 that was necessary given the resin skin of the model, I started spraying the base coat and this time I didn't use the red undercoat, the hull red. I go straight for Dunkelgelb RAL 728 DG1 from Ammo by Mick. That's an acrylic paint because I wanted to re-evaluate what I know or what my experience is about using lacquer paints and acrylics. Ammo by Mick paints require a special procedure on applying them very thin in multiple layers, making this a quite lengthy process. It was very hot that week and I didn't want to sit in the smell of the lacquer paint and the Tamiya lacquer thinner. But I'm not comparing Ammo by Mick versus AK here. I'm comparing acrylic paints versus lacquer paints when it comes to the crew applied camouflage that would be present by the end of 1933 when this vehicle was issued to the troop. I use here the Harden Steenbeck Infinity CR Plus with its 0.4 mm nozzle, the Ammo by Mick Green with its corresponding thinner and I try to apply crew applied camouflage, field applied camouflage. So the resulting pattern should be feasible for a 135th scale figure applying a camouflage here. And this is not really possible. I was only able to achieve what you can see here. Every time my airbrush leaves the frame, I'm cleaning the tip. The Harden Steenbeck Infinity comes with a 0.15 mm nozzle. This would be my preferred tool for this task. But with acrylic paints, it would dry and clog on the tip immediately, every two seconds. That was my experience so far. So I'm everything but happy with the result I got. And in a few seconds, I'm finally done with using acrylics for the camouflage. So it's off to the ultrasonic cleaner, switching over to the 0.15 mm nozzle. And trust me, I've tried this out quite a lot. It's not possible to spray the acrylics in the same way. I use here Tamiya lacquer thinner and the AK Real Colors as a representative of a lacquer based paint. And even so, I have the paint a little bit too thin or the pressure a little bit too high. You see me getting pooling here. I am able to super detail, <laughs> super detail. <laughs> yeah, I'm able to improve the camo pattern, let's say. That's not highly professional, of course, but it has a little bit more variety. I have more control and I can work for, that's the most important part, I can work for about 10 minutes without cleaning the tip. On a tank model this large, the applying the camouflage takes some time and should not be hasted. Switching over to the red brown in this case, or the chocolate brown, the same thing. You can see how fine the lines get when we have the small nozzle and the well covering and very thin lacquer paint here. I will remember for myself when I have to do with a pale tank or vehicle or gun, I will switch to acrylics, removing the stink out of my room. And as soon as I get into the need of a camouflage, it will be lacquer all the way. I should add the acrylic base coat survived the complete hairspray chipping. There was no issues whatsoever. So they are on the same level, I would guess. But of course, a lacquer paint is known to dry much harder. I would like to wrap this up here. I just added the details, painting the tools. There's nothing to write home about. I will go in detail 
in another video on painting the German tools as well. For now, the tank model is in its module, it's finished with its base coat and ready to be whitewashed in the next episode. As a small build recap, I'm just disassembling the model now into its modules, showing you how well or how well not this whole thing works. If you want to have influence of next week's video by asking or requesting something I should cover in greater detail, you can do so until tomorrow evening. And otherwise, see you guys next time. Make use of the comment section down below. I answer every comment. Happy modeling till next week. And thank you for watching, of course. See you guys.